Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, dear friends. A very good morning. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit complete your life, starting with your thoughts, starting by your reasoning, your intelligence, opening, enlarging your understanding in order for you to understand, understand, comprehend His Word. And once you understand His Word and you practice it, then that's it. You have a new life. You will start a new life because you will start to live according to the thoughts of God. Isn't it nice? Yes or no? And pay attention. We've been speaking about the soul, the destiny of the soul. Yesterday, we spoke about the fact that the soul is not the spirit and the spirit is not the soul. The soul is the center of our emotions, our feelings. It's in the soul that we feel angry, that we feel love. It's in the soul that we taste our meals, that we desire to eat or not to eat. It's in the soul that we receive all the information from the world which makes the soul whether to feel good or bad. And just as an example, we had the fast of Daniel, isn't it? And we spent 21 days without secular information. And then what happened? Our mind was pure, our soul was light, isn't it? Didn't you feel your soul lighter, relieved? It's because you stopped receiving information in your mind, the information of the world, and this information obviously influences the soul because it comes from the mind, it goes to the soul, and the soul gets heavy, worried, anxious with things that are going to happen, isn't it? So the soul is the center of emotion, of feelings. And it is the soul that Jesus came to save. He didn't come to save the spirit or the body. He came to save the soul and only the soul. And that's why he gave his soul on behalf of those who accept him and believe in him with all of their strength, with all of their heart. So, speaking about the soul and the emotions and the feelings of the soul, then Jesus speaks of a parable. And it's not a story now, it's a parable, an analogy. And it says like this, that he spoke a parable to a young man who came to complain to him, asking that he would intercede with his brother to share the inheritance with him. But he said, who has made me a judge over you? So he said to them, he spoke a parable saying, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully in abundance. And he thought within himself saying, what shall I do? Since I have no room to store my crops, I have so much fruits, I have no room to keep them. So he had an idea. Okay, I will do this. I will put down my barns and build 
great and there I will store all my crops and my goods all the seeds everything and then I will say to my soul pay attention that's very nice Jesus everything he spoke is perfect super perfect then I will say to my soul said that rich man to himself he said to himself in his mind I will say to my soul so his mind spoke to his soul which is the heart I will say to my soul soul my soul you have many goods laid up for many years take your ease eat drink and be merry look at what the spirit of this rich man said to his soul so you have many goods laid up for many years which is what every human being normally those who obviously don't fear God those who don't know God and they make this proposal to themselves to save money to make a lot of money so they can enjoy it later on in life and live the rest of their days peacefully knowing that they are going to die of course but this rich man said to his soul you have many goods laid up meaning you have plenty of money you have wealth laid up for many years to the end of your life and then he spoke to his soul to his heart take your ease and that's what everybody wants the soul wants to, wants to take it easy it wants to have peace the soul does not want to worry about the future it wants to guarantee the future today so it wants to make money today to become rich today so that it can be at ease and at peace with itself so you see the soul seeking the pleasure of a peace that is based on money on wealth and riches but not only rest but eat the pleasure of eating remember that I said yesterday the pleasure of eating and enjoying a delicious food isn't it it's the soul that feels it the, the soul wants to rest the soul wants to have peace and to eat well the soul wants to drink well and the soul wants to have fun as well so all of these things meaning with all the wealth that he multiplied he then said to his soul take your ease eat drink and be merry pay attention dear friend isn't it what most people think yes or no isn't it what has been happening in this world people forget that the soul is eternal and that it doesn't die the body does so they do not worry about giving their soul what it needs the most which is the guarantee of eternity with God because with this soul or the soul of this rich man see what God tells him this is a parable so God said to him fool fool God called this man a fool 
Why? Because he was only thinking of the satisfaction of his soul here on earth, only here on earth. He wasn't thinking of the future of his soul, the future after death. He was only thinking of the future here on earth. So here on earth, he had the guarantee to take it easy and to eat and drink and be merry as much as he wanted. But he didn't think of eternity. So God said, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. But why did God say your soul will be required of you? Why didn't he say tonight your soul will be taken from you? This night they will call for your soul. No, he said your soul will be required of you. I believe that in this parable, Jesus teaches that here is the devil that goes and, and asks, requires, and takes the soul. Tonight, the devil will require your soul. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? For all the souls that will inherit it, for all the souls that will experience probably the same destination of their father. Therefore, dear friend, when we are here speaking about the soul, actually, it's not myself. Jesus is the one who says, and I'm just blowing the trumpets and speaking so that people can realize what they need to do. Because everything passes. This world is futile. This life will pass away. But your soul will live throughout eternity. And the wise ones, those who are wise, obviously will look forward to the eternity of their soul. I know that many people don't like when we speak about hell. I know that many people despise because they don't like to hear the truth. They have ears, but not to hear the word of God. I know that. But as a sower that God has placed me here as a sower of his word, then I will work, I will sow. Who knows? That there are people who want to first take care of their soul. As Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added. So, Jesus is, is speaking here, warning here, exhorting here about the eternity of the soul. He came here to save your soul, dear friend. And perhaps you are so worried with the things of this life, which are passing, and, and you know that. We all have an expiry date here in this world. Isn't it true? So, you forget to tend to the most important needs of your soul, which is the most important, which is the salvation of the soul. So those who are wise, they are not looking forward towards the future here on earth because they know that this world will catch fire one day. But those who are wise, they take care of the eternity of their soul. And that's what we are here working for, in order for you to take care of your soul. All right? The Bible says that he who wins souls is wise. He who wins souls is wise. Obviously, those who win souls are the ones who already won their own souls. They've already guaranteed their salvation. They have their soul already kept for eternity. But the person who keeps their soul is wise. Imagine when the person saves souls, then they are even wiser. We are going to end it here and we'll be back tomorrow. May God bless you all and may He enlighten the understanding of all of you so you won't forget you will not forget of this care 
that everyone has to have with their own soul so that God won't call us as fools. God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow.